the grade three unsolved problem comes to us in the form of a game. Thank goodness. As a game designer, that makes me very happy. Games belong in the mathematics classroom because they're a celebration of problem solving, and this one is especially sweet. It was designed in 1973 by Eric Solomon, and it belongs front and center in the curriculum of any child learning subtraction. I would go so far as to say that this game alone if this is the only thing that a child plays for the entire year, it's going to beat 90% of other curricula. That is my prediction. Randomized control trial. <laughs> Go for it. Somebody out there, research this. Okay, so how do you play this game? You start off by choosing a number of armies. In this case, uh, the players have decided 10 armies apiece. The black player is going to go first, and they're going to put three armies over there. The red team, where are they going to put? They're going to put four armies there. The black team, two armies. The red team, four armies. And the black team is finishing first. So they've got rid of their armies first. And that means that they're going to be starting the second part of the game first. So remember that. Okay, the red armies, the, there's still two red armies left to deploy. And so those are going to be deployed over here. Now it's the second part of the game. And who is going to go? It's black, because black finished first, so black is going to attack first. Five plus three, is that more than four? Yes, so the four is destroyed. Now it's red army's turn. They can attack neighboring regions. Four plus two, that is six, which is more than five, so the five is destroyed. Three plus two is more than four, so the four army is destroyed. And no more attacking can happen. That's the end of the game. Not simple. So how do you figure out who wins? You count up the number of territories that are controlled by each player. In this case, red controls one, black controls two, so black wins. It's that simple. If there's a tie, I suggest that you count the number of armies and the person with the most armies left wins. Aggression is a very flexible platform to give your students practice with addition and subtraction. But it does much more than that, of course, because it's a game. For those students who are way beyond addition and subtraction and needing to practice, this game is a pure strategy game. And getting your students to beat each other in pure strategy games, that's never a waste of time, because it teaches problem solving in a fun way. And problem solving is really what we're about in the math classroom, right? Right. OK, now which problem did this replace? It sadly replaced one of the great uh, unsolved problems that I think is out there, and that is the graceful tree conjecture. So I'm very glad that we have aggression, but the graceful tree conjecture is an absolute beauty. To see this uh, uh, being played with real students, just click in the center of your screen. Here's how it plays. So you start off with uh, odd numbers, 1 through 13. You distribute them into the circles, and then you look at the differences between connected circles. So for example, here we have 3 minus 13, or 13 minus 3, that's 10. 13 minus 1, that's going to be 12. And you can see that all of these are different, and that's exactly what you want. All of the numbers there are different, so we win. Of course, we didn't win. This is a, uh, you can see that there's two 10s there. So that was a failure, and I love pretending to fail myself in front of a grade 3 classroom uh, whenever I'm presenting this problem. In 1917, Henry Dudney came up with a jam for those students learning subtraction. I've amended it slightly. You have to have a gold one-by-one one tile in your solution. But otherwise, you're just trying to tile these squares using the least number of squares possible. Here. I've tiled my living room with 18 tiles. Can I do better? Hmm. Yes, I can. So this is actually the optimal solution, and it uses 11 tiles. I start with a much smaller, uh, uh, I ask the students to tile my bathroom. And then once they tile my bathroom, I ask them to tile my kitchen, always with one golden tile. The mutant Fibonacci bunny sequence is another great way to get your students practicing subtraction. This is the way it works. You choose a number. In this case, I've chosen 13. Now, it's a competition to see 
who can get to that number 13 in the least number of steps? So the way it works is that uh, you start off with three ones, and then you can either add together your last three numbers, or you can find the difference of the last two numbers. So you have a choice. So what are we going to do here? Uh, let's um, add together those. You get three. Let's add together those. That would be three plus one plus one. That would be five. Five plus three plus one. That's going to be nine. Nine minus four. That's going to be four. So you can keep on going here. Nine plus four plus five. There, Thirty-one. And then thirty-one minus eighteen is thirteen. We've been successful, and that uh, only took us ten steps, which is better than the previous two attempts. But it's not the only way to get to thirteen using ten steps. Here's another way. Coban triangles are beautiful. If you want to explore them, click on the center of your screen and you'll go to a separate video. The last problem for grade 3 is the traveling salesman problem from 1857. To do it, you choose a bunch of cities and you try to find the shortest loop that you can travel around visiting all the cities returning to your initial city. Is this the best? I don't know. Perhaps this one is better. You can use this problem in two ways. The first way is to let the students get out a ruler and actually measure the distance. The second way is more appropriate to give the students practice and addition, and that is that you give distances to between a whole bunch of these cities and then they have to choose the way to get around the cities to minimize the, the overall uh, distance.